Good morning or good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here with Lina and Alec and myself in this webinar live that we are that we prepared just for you. My name is Monica Hernandez, and I am your host of the Material Business Podcast uh, with Infinity Growth. And I have a really great time preparing for today with Alec and Lena. And the idea came up because last uh, last this year when we did the Corrosion Awareness Day, we were talking about how can people from the day to day take pictures of day to day items that are corroded. And Alec was part of that initiative. There was a magnificent winner and he donated one of his books. Thank you, Alec. And we decided there, there, there should be more uh, than this, you know, in education about people in corrosion. So we started talking and then we just, we finally decided there is a uh, a whole lot of people that don't know what corrosion is. And it's very interesting because we get so excited about it. CUI, stress corrosion cracking, and all those mechanisms. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of normal day-to-day -day guys that don't get the same excitement. So we said, okay, let's do let's do something about it. So Lena, Alec. Thank you for being here. Thank you for accepting the invite for all this back and forth. Um, if you have heard Alec in the podcast that we've released some time ago, he talked about the correlation between corrosion and everything, pretty much. And it's part of one of the chapters of his book, if you haven't read it. So there is a direct correlation between corrosion and anything art, literature, music, sex, everything. So we said, OK, we need to get this word going out. And then we need to talk about this in terms that people can make uh, some sense out of it and understand why it is so exciting. So we have here uh, all these uh, professionals. Thank you for everyone that it is uh, coming into, into the podcast or this webinar. So we want to say, first of all, that even corrosion is complicated, it's difficult, it makes us lose money, it makes us have tragedies and many other things. It is not a nasty phenomenon. And we want to share that with you all. It is something that we can study and we can um, pretty much pre prevent uh, something for happening if we understand the phenomenon and how that really interacts with everyone. So that's why we are here today. And thank you, Lena and Alec, for seconding me in all my crazy ideas of bringing this to everyone's lives. So I want you guys to introduce yourself so you know uh, what is it that we're going to do. Uh, so let's start with Lena, please. Hi, guys. Thank you for being here in this webinar. Welcome to everyone. My name is Lena Hernandez, and I'm an economist and I'm safety trainer for the OSHA. So usually we are receiving many people for training about safety, and that was that called my attention about the corrosion, and that's the reason that I'm talking with Monica about this interesting webinar so welcome everyone and i know that we can learn a lot on this thank you alec thank you monica alec <laughs> yes yes uh i'm an expert a professional in corrosion science and engineering and uh, i teach and i deal with corrosion more than 45 years Yes, also many years. Yes, and I connect uh, all kinds of our life, all types of our life, and all subjects with corrosion of materials. And this idea, uh, our mutual 
maybe I don't remember exactly the idea of Monica, yes, to present corrosion for non-corrosionists. But if non-corrosionists, this means that for all people that who deal and don't deal with corrosion. And thank you. Thank you, Alec. So we have two professionals. I've decided, <clears throat> I'm sorry. We decided we want to start with safety, uh, process safety, and the correlation between process safety and corrosion. And the reason, sorry, I'm just, my throat is killing me. The reason why we want to do that is because, although uh, it seems it doesn't have many things in common, it does indeed have a lot of in common. So when we start looking at things, like Alex said, in particular areas, there is a lot of correlation between corrosion and what we are doing in our day-to-day -day lives. So we have been dealing with, Alec, you have been in the industry for a long, long, long time, different, you know, in different roles, uh, research and development, industry teaching you have fulfilled a lot of roles so what can you tell us about this correlation or maybe in your words you can describe what is it that i would like yes to share my uh, uh, to share my uh, the slides yes just For a sure. moment because yes yes no. <clears throat> yes, you do you see? We are okay. seeing your slides, yes. correct. Uh, correct. Uh, okay, yes. We can I would like yes, yes. Our <laughs> our world is uh, visual today. And my students, a young generation of scientists, engineers like to not only listen to hear, they'd like to see. Therefore, I'd like, yes, to answer the first question. Uh, or why is process safety important and how it is connected to corrosion? Uh, six years ago, in 2017, the European Federation of Corrosion, together with the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, is Center for Chemical Process Safety, Organize a mutual meeting in Prague, Europe. Process safety professionals knew the process safety issues. Well, I see in their presentations, but did not know deeply the basics of corrosion and vice versa. I put attention that corrosion professionals, experts, do not understand deeply process safety principles. And I'd like to introduce to process safety professionals, the principles of corrosion. Thus, the chemical industry has existed for over 250 years. If corrosion topics began occupying the last 100 years, process safety began occupying only the last 50 years. During all my career, I put attention, I registered, and I wrote down and investigated, analyzed all corrosion cases. I worked for 22 years for my oil refinery companies, all corrosion cases and events. And I put attention that corrosion events occur every two, three days. And I'm sure that this is in all chemical enterprises. Nobody connected corrosion with process safety. For example, only the last example uh, that uh, occurred only two months ago in Moscow in July, a burst pipe with boiling water, boiling water more than 100 degrees centigrade in the Moscow shopping center seasons, you may see. It. And four people boiled, they boiled in hot water. They passed away and about 100 people received different burnings. The cause of bursting was uncontrolled corrosion of pipes transporting boiling water. What do you think? Who is responsible for this case? Humans, they did not 
connect corrosion risk of pipes with safety. I can bring you many examples and in literature in different uh, branch of our industry. And during preparation for this webinar, editor of the journal Process Safety Progress, Ronald Wiley, really, he, I uh, wrote him and he sent me, and he sent me that word corrosion appeared 400 times in Process Safety Progress journal during the last 10 years. He sent me the top 20 corrosion articles published in the journal Process Safety Progress. And I read, I put attention that there was no systematic and logical methodology in the representation of corrosion issues in the process safety program journal. The situation gave me and him wishing to begin talking about corrosion for non-corrosionists. That's our idea with Monica and Lena is welcome. Thank you, Alec. And that is exactly it. So the main journal that publishes about process safety had that interconnection and you took the time to go through all those papers. And that is what you're presenting today. And just some days ago, we had incidents. So really incidents that touches corrosion or something about the management, like you said, of corrosion. Because it's not the phenomena, it's how we manage it. And that is what is making us taking wrong decisions and then ultimately hurt people and the environment. So thank you for that, uh, that introduction. So Lina, in your words, how can you say that this process safety is going to, you know, link in together? Like define, define that to us, please. Well, we are in safety progress and safety process, different factors, but I think uh, engineer design and human factors must be connected. And this is a good complement for get a good process safety management that included all, um, all the factors, right? Not just one of the teams separate, just to get put it together. Because if we don't have a good training, we don't have a good information, how we can develop in a good process safety, right? So that's is the, my point view of this kind of things about corrosion. And that's all that was called my attention, right? And that's the reason that we are here with two experts like you and Mr. Alec. Exactly. And that is what we keep on saying. We need to collaborate. We need to work together. This is not a matter of the corrosion person that is one person for the whole refinery and <laughs> nobody else knows about it. This needs to be disseminated and we're gonna watch uh, in a little bit. We have a surprise to all of you, uh, a, a little video of what people really think that is corrosion and that will show us the disconnection um, and misunderstanding that we could have about it, okay? So perfect. So we spoke about process safety. We gave our definitions, how these two interconnect. Ale gave us a, little, a lot of insight on it. So what do you think are the problems in your particular industries that we can address doing a better management of the programs? I'm going to start with Alec this time. Yes. OK. I would like to share you how uh, several examples of your, my experience in corrosion problems for non corrosionists. Yes, and this is only one example. I prepared several, but I think that. In oil refining, oil and gas industry, you may read, but this is my own example. You may see coal shed farms in Israel. This is wonderful coal, as we have in Israel the best, I think, yogurt and different dairy products. This is roofs are made from hot galvanized steel with, yes, 
And uh, the encoding should be should be 19 microns thickness, and with organic coatings, 25 microns. And Israel Institute of Standards, yes, this is defined. Yes, in order to protect during five years, not less, but after two years, you may see of service, yes, they were kind of severe rust, severe rust, yes, appeared inside of these, uh, wow, inside of these roofs. Why? Then uh, usually people owners of these co share they do not understand the corrosion. They are not corrosion, is this? They know how to, to deal with codes and they see you in courts. Neither co shed owners nor lawyers understand why rust appeared after such a short period. And I can see that in our investigation, this is many, many co shed firms, yes, that real thickness was not 19, only two microns. And organic code is not 25, but only eight microns. It's very simple to prove. Yes, because we did, we did uh, investigation, investigation with, with cross-section of these roofs. And it was very easy to show and to prove in courts. Therefore, these cases I even oh. described in my last book. Now, you may continue. Thank you. Thank you, Alec. And yes. that is that is it, right? That is a lot of, you know, day-to-day -day items. And when we did uh, the photo contest for the corrosion awareness day, we had a lot of people sending mainly what they define as rust. And uh, it was very interesting for us to dig down. But in this simple case, we can see that is not the corrosion that appeared. This, the problem was how did we apply it? How did we protect it? And did we follow the procedure? And I think the answer is no. OK, so that is that is a really good. And we can go on and on. Now, Lena, I want to pick your your brain on the training side, right? Because you work a lot on training and you have made the connection on it. So tell us about it. OK, I was thinking about the samples or the no corrosion. So sometimes we receive a lot of workers in our with different levels, you know, in our job site. So we are at different places with uh, um, insulation over the pies for protection. But sometimes, like I mentioned, Mr. Alec, it is not a correct protection. And that's the, the, right, the, the reason that we got corrosion. But sometimes people think that it's corrosion, but it is not corrosion, right? So that's as difficult for these people to identify these kind of things. And sometimes people, with the, uh, even with a simple uh, safety equipment, they say, oh, that's as dirty. And that's not dirty. It's, it's rust and that's corrosion. And <laughs> it's very interesting because everybody has a different definition about this. And different knowledge, and and I make a video for you guys, and I and I take some of the guys at job site asking corrosion is, and it was very interesting. It is for a long time because it takes so much time. But Monica put it this like in a brief information for us. Yeah, I'll show that in a in a little bit. But one of the things that I I think we can capture from your day to day activities is, for example, safety equipment that people wear on themselves. So the safety mm -hmm. harnesses, or the slings, or uh, any other safety yeah. device that is there to protect the worker that has a metallic part. And sometimes, like you were saying yesterday people just wear that harness throughout the days and the snow or when in my case in your case it's very hot and humid and it's all those you know you guys are working close to the ocean so it has all that environmental component until visually you can see that definitely that harness has some indications of rust <laughs> and does 
is this still good to continue using? And that I think is a very important. And we spoke about that yesterday when we were doing the and the pre-call. And that is what we want to say, okay, in this industry specific safety protection, if you're wearing a harness, you gave us a really good example yesterday, Lina. So is this really what we want these workers to protect their lives? If they are falling, will that harness really hold them or not? You know, so it's, it's one of those cases that we can make the correlation sim in simple terms out of what we've discussed before between the safety of the people and what really yeah, corrosion is. So yeah, thank you for that. So maybe let's go back to, um, to the correlation then. Talking about correlation, Alec, what, do you, what is your view on this? Uh, yes, but before we should uh, define main topic with we'll deal with our panel. Yes, this is definition that what is corrosion. Oh, this is material. Yes, this is material interaction between material and environment, which result in corrosion. We have many environments. One, two, three phases, infinite media, and 40,000 different alloys and metals. And we should define corrosion risk management as identifying analysis, evaluation, and elimination of corrosion hazards. But a hazard is a substance, object, or situation with a potential for an accident or damage. And corrosion is one of the biggest hazards because it's related to substance, objects, and situations leading to interaction between them and deterioration of both. This is very important definition where, where, when we begin deal with this problem. Please, now. Okay. Continue. So you kind of stop sharing, uh, Alec, yes. if you may. No. And Just thank you. Okay. It's okay? It's, no? uh, we are still seeing the presentation. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> You're good. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to show now the video that Lena made. So bear with me one second. I'm just going to pull it up. And uh, it is not this one. I'm just stopping sharing here and I'm going to share this screen and this is the video okay and it's very interesting so I want you guys to pay attention oh it is not sounding for some reason I don't have the volume can you guys hear? Alec, can you hear? I don't hear, but I can read. You can read. Awesome. I can okay. Read. Yes. <laughs> so he's saying, I don't know what corrosion is. Yeah, corrosion is bad for the pipe. If you leave it on the stainless pipe, it will rust through eventually. Mm, you gotta clean it off. If you wanna know, send it off, take it off. Okay. Corrosion is, this guy's saying, when oxygen and uh, water mix and it's like rust and it can be bad for your health if you inhale it. <laughs> this guy's saying corrosion to me is rust or yes. any kind of chemical reaction that causes rust or the failure of equipment metal. It can be harmful for, to you as if you get rust in your hands or on your body. So it's kind of contaminating of anything. That's corrosion in my opinion. That's that's what this guy is saying. So it's very interesting. Thank you, Lena, for going out and 
having the courage to get those guys their word on on corrosion. And we've seen a lot of different opinions on it. Yeah, correct. Okay. What else can you hear when you are in the field about it, Lena? Well, people always, like I mentioned in the in the first, we had a different levels of education in our in our in our workers. So those are different perceptions. And we had a people with experience, people with experience, people with knowledge, people with no knowledge. So that's just a mix. And this is when we need to put everything together in the same place, in the same words, for everyone to understand what is the corrosion and how they can affect our bodies, right? It is not just for the people working in this industry. Like I mentioned, it's corrosion for everyone because we had a uh, war pipes, we had a uh, different things in our in our vehicles that can produce that can have a corrosion. So it's very interesting all of this. I love talking with the uh, people and and get the perception that each person has of that one. Sometimes is 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 um can be dangerous because people think it's is nothing. And they touch in because, especially for the um, protection, protection for corrosion, that's what heavy. We can use it as vessels, we can use insulation, we can use in different coatings for cover that one. And this is the mix that, that can cause like a, some hazard for our health and some harmful in our health, right? Because if we don't know what is the, um, components for the coating and we don't know what is the components for the for the asbestos and how this affect our health we can we can do uh wrong things right and that is really dangerous for the people so my concern is everything about health for the people working in this in this kind of things so will you say that the major challenges is education Definitely. If we don't have a good training and we don't have a good information about the things, we cannot protect the people because if they don't understand the first thing, we cannot continue with the training, right? We need to we need to present them the whole map, not just one thing about this. Perfect. Thank you. So now that Lena has told us what are the major you know, challenges that this industry is, needs to address. I think it goes hand in hand what Alec thinks about education and what in the, in the introduction he told us about education. So Alec, what is your point of view on this? Uh, education a little bit later, I see just a moment. Yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, for, 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 yes, yeah. uh, uh, you see, this is problems of our challenges. Yes, yeah. I think I think the first first we should introduce in all enterprises corrosion management culture. It is very important to also to deal with different activities. For safety always starts with correct engineering anti-corrosion design and forcing managers to establish penalties and incentives. People do not understand, especially managers, that they should force to establish these penalties and incentives to deal with corrosion, not to deal. Then legislation in the field of corrosion management on the federal or even government level in different ministries, institutes of standards of different countries, as now we have legislations in the environment, protection of the environment. We should do this, then searching how chaotic corrosion processes result in failure, because this is very, very important for us to create models similar to weather models and to use big data that we have for many years. 
this is the same as to predict weather, to foresee, as we know weather is constantly changing state of the atmosphere and corrosion constantly changing state of a metal environment system. And of course, if we do this model in our, if do we create this model in any case degree of uncertainty will remain then to show to our respondents and a newspaper journals not to fight, not to combat, not to battle with corrosion. We can only control corrosion according to the second law of thermodynamics. Then I will I will introduce also different my thoughts, different my thoughts about uh, education, how I see, but a, a little bit later. Perfect. So Lena had a question about economics and uh, See, when, when we spoke yesterday and the days prior, um, one of the, the reasons is we normally speak about corrosion in terms of money. So do you want to ask a question, Lena? Yeah, we're always talking about the economic part and we take care probably the human factor, the, our human resource part. But we need to continue to invest more in our people, right? Because if we don't invest more people, more money in our people, we cannot have results. Because that's easy, come here and train people and talking and talking. But if we don't have the money and resource for combat, for like a, uh, get a solution to this problem, we can continue always with the same problem and we never stop. For sure. So. I think what you're trying to say is if we could elaborate a little bit more on other things that are not economic, and I'm going to give my point of view here, if I may. When we talk about when we talk about uh, corrosion and like Alex said, we need to correlate because we get very excited, right? Corrosion and their insulation is that aerobic bacteria, anaerobic bacteria. What is it uh, happening? And it's a uh, he so he can many things that makes us excited when we are technical, but how we can get that attention from upper management. So that is one of the reasons we speak in terms of money, because then we say not only will you have this failure, but the consequence of this failure will, will make you have this, this uh, sense of loss. Uh, monetary speaking about money however your point of view is absolutely right is the one of the things that we need to mix into the equation is how this economic is affected by losing personnel or by having people that are untrained how is that making us lose money so it is absolutely right we need to add that into the equation and then we need to find ways of summarizing the amount of money that we spend in corrosion is ridiculous and you can imagine with the introduction that Alec did two to three incidents every every sorry two to three incidents every yes, day every. so it is a lot of incidents and a lot of downtime and a lot of people hurt a lot of environment you know damaged so all that has a component economical. So that is why we speak about economic terms. Now we need to bring on the human equation, which is something that sometimes in the management of changes and processes we miss. Uh, but definitely it makes a picture in our heads. If I tell you that, for example, from now on, every man, woman and child in the world needs to pay around 400 US dollars to cover corrosion costs, according to the latest corrosion study that was completed globally. So that paints a picture in your mind of people in some parts of the world, people live with less than a dollar a day. Now you're asking them to pay $400 to cover corrosion costs. 
So it is that puts a lot of perspective when we see it that way. So that is that is this sign out. 53 billion, according to the impact corrosion study, is what we spent only in Canada, right? We did the study, uh, I managed it, and it is that the result, $53 billion spent in corrosion uh, across the country, that's a lot of money that could be used in something else. So that gives the perspective on the reasoning, but I know Alec has something really good to talk about when we talk about health. And I think it will be interesting to see Alec. Yes, correct. You want to show your slides about the health? Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. This is, yes, I would, yes. <laughs> I deal with corrosion, yes, and our health, I deal. I know, yes, this is one of the examples, yes, that how, <laughs> is corrosion related to our health and we know that uh, there are many iron medicines because if there are no hemoglobin a hemoglobin is the molecule in our, our gut and the people usually women they feel Alec, I think you are having some issues. Can you hear as well? And after 12 hours to take out this, to say that exactly 20, and then to give a wife or your friend, yes, to eat this apple with corrosion with uh, red, red corroded products, iron oh. hydroxide, iron excise, and thus hemoglobin will be increased in your organism. If there is no enough, enough iron in our blood and in our organism, this is, this is animal, it's what the problem in Kaboya, what the problem with women, and one student of maths and faculty from University of Galfantara, Canada, about 15 years ago, Chris Charles came to Cambodia. He suggested iron fish because iron fish people from Cambodia think that they promise a slug, but not also luck. He put and showed how to put inside of the of pants and to while cooking soap. They dissolve, yes, and does iron product corrosion, corrosion product of iron, yes, were, were inside of soap. Thus, iron fish promises battle and anemia. And Alec is having sorry you're having um you're having alec i think you're having a little bit of um problems with the sound can you try again i didn't hear, I didn't hear. okay so he's okay. having Hippoc issues with he's having issues with the the sound Ah, okay. Mich corrosion of silver in health. Okay. Hippocrates wrote, yes, about two and a half thousand, two hundred thousand in gold. Silver has bactericides property. This is was in classical Greek period. And the Alexander the Great, yes, he with his army came to India and they uh, <laughs> they used uh, bad water and they uh, they dead therefore he knew he knew the results of hippocrates and he showed how to use silver helmet to drink water that does david save his armor even silver compounds were used to prevent infection in the world war the first 
before the advent antibiotic. And this is only because silver corrodes, silver corrodes, and, and receive during the rare condition causes your complexion to turn blue or gray when your body has been overexposed to silver. Also, not life threatening, it may have a serious impact in the life. Who is at risk? Different people with who take dietary supplements or medications containing silver, who regularly use eye drops or cosmetic containing silver, have an occupation that involves prolonged exposure to silver, and workplace exposure may occur in silver mining, silver refining, jewelry making, silverware, metal alloy manufacturing, photographic processes. We should understand that there is golden mean Everything in life should be in optimal range. This is health you see in our y, uh, y axis and A in our organism. If not so much, this is harmful deficiency. For example, if there are no zinc, you may see, yes, here's a problem. Here's, uh, and more then optimal range yes this It's so interesting what he's saying but he's having trouble with uh, the connection I guess Define. Alec, we that yes. Everything yes, that yes. you said was super interesting. We had a little bit of flickering with uh, the voice, so some at some moments we lost what you were saying. So maybe without showing the slides, would you be just tell us? A little bit of a summary of what we just ju discussed because we lost your voice in some in some sentences. So maybe perhaps just make a a, a summary of why is this, for example, uh, about the health and it was important. I think the one the part that was very clear was when they put the soap the the, the fish in the soap and that made all those. <laughs> all those little ions of iron go yeah. into the soap and that helped uh, with anemia. Yes. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, so we lost what? a little bit of your, your sound when you were explaining. Ah, I, I, okay. So that, yeah, I'm... it was okay. a little bit flickery. So maybe just a little a little summary of why is this important to health to answer Lina's question. To Lina or for me? For you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> because yes, we have all, all metals corroded, all metals, yes. We cannot use in our organism intake, we cannot use uh, metals as atoms. Only oxidized, only oxidized silver, copper, zinc, iron, oxidized metals. Yes, and another one, aluminum and so on. They may be useful and they may be toxic. Yes, for example, as you know, the ice, but another that we knew in Rome, in Rome times, for example, uh, 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 no, PB, plumbum, yes, mm -hmm. this is uh, uh, plumbum, yes, and then uh, also with chromium, yes, chromium, different kinds of corroded chromium, they result in cancer in, our, in uh, different organisms, 
and this may be mm -hmm. corro corroded, corroded metals, yes, may result, for example, nickel for allergy. Therefore, we should deal. And I know people who investigate this problem, how corroded metals influence our organism in allergy and different, different illnesses. Yes, and we know three main heavy metals as cadmium, cadmium, mercury, mercury, uh, and uh, PB plumbum. Okay, uh, therefore we should be very. Uh, but there is an interesting situation that was in was in thirties of the twentieth century in England when people thought that uh, aluminum, aluminum results in, in uh, different illnesses. No, but uh, 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 women use at their kitchen, at their kitchen, uh, p t, uh, p uh, different, uh, uh, well, uh, different as instruments from aluminum. Yes, and they clean with hydroxide solution. And hydroxide solution corroded, corroded is aluminum and different piece and it is uh, from in this piece and uh, the residue, residues of different food, yes, they remain and therefore people, yes, don't feel, they did not feel well. Okay. Absolutely, thank you. That was a really good summary. So to answer Lena's question, it can be good or bad, depending on the material, the contaminant, your own health. And we even had a podcast, uh, MVT, he came in, in one of the last ones that we did. He's a surgeon. He's also a biomaterials engineer. And he spoke about how their company is making explants uh, and then creating, recreating the original form with the idea of knowing how much metal is being like is being displaced from the knee or hip replaced part into the body of the person. So what is making the what is making people sick um, that has those implants is the reaction of the uh, the bodies to those metals. And there are simple solutions. So like are, are doctors having are doctors doing a test for metals on those patients? If they are, then what is the threshold? And I know for a fact, because my mom has a hip replaced and she has not had one test and I have been pushing for it. And but it's it's complicated. It's a, it's another another world. So depending on how you look at things, um, to summarize the question, Lena, it depends. Um, and time has been really gone so fast. We are almost at the end. Of, uh, of our time together and I know we have so many other things and so many questions Lena yesterday called me and said I have so many more questions so we'll make sure that we'll target those in another of those episodes but for now I want to ask you both after the discussion I know it's been short but it's been very uh, rich on on content what do you think you can see different about corrosion from today? Like, what is one thing that you come out and you say, okay, this is different and I can take that with me uh, to those guys in the field that said, I don't know what corrosion is. So what do you say, Lena? Well, I think uh, definitely we need to work together, no left like a, uh, process management and management is there and the people from the field is over there. We need to have, we need to find a good combination and, and good information that we were like a team to find solutions, right? Because everything had a solution where we address it together because people thinking different when they are sitting in the office and we had different problems when we are stay at the field, right? So, they had in, the, in their minds that uh, they got a programming for this pie and this protection. It was for a long time, but sometimes that's not like this, right? The protection probably is for 20 years, but that never happened. It was in 10 years we started having problems. 
and they need to hear the voice for the people that they feel. I that's that's a that's a that's a hard job that we had to do it between process management and and working with the human factor that we had uh, our best assets and our best resource that is our people. Absolutely, absolutely. So we keep on the same thing. We need to work together. We need to reassess. And one thing that you have said that is very important <clears throat> is that those programs and those processes and everything that interconnects both safety, process safety and corrosion, it, ne it will never, it will have to be looked at as a dynamic process and not something that you do one time and then you forget about. It's a dynamic process that, like you said, if the conditions are changing, if we have different uh, ways of working, if we have a uh, new challenges or different variables in the equation, we need to include those into the way that we manage. So that was very, very insightful. Thank you. Alec, what will you say is, will be like the last piece of advice, perhaps? I would like, yes, to, to finish by what to teach and how to teach. I'd like to return to our problems with teaching, yes, what to teach and how to teach. It is possible to draw in information ocean and how to find needed information. Yes, we should understand how to defer truth from faith. We should teach young generation how to be creative. For this, we need to interact our engineering disciplines with art and philosophy. Mm -hmm. We should teach students, scientists and engineers not only to know but understand how to use this knowledge. Yes, I have many examples for this, but I know this now, now, yes, we must seek to understand the hazards we live with in insufficient erosion, insufficient erosion management. Yes, this is because standards code specification rules give us a knowledge are not effectively used. And I can say that main problem that human factor up to 90% plays a vital role. And I'd like to show you one of the book of by Yuval Noah Harari, Israeli historian, Homo Deus, a brief history of tomorrow. He wrote, Homo sapiens is the only species on the earth capable of cooperating flexibly in large numbers. Thus, the great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. We sh should do together, together. And I would like to show you, this is <laughs> my several books, yes, in English, yes, and education takes a primary role. This is last book, Corrosion, Control and Monitoring in Hebrew, and anybody wants to translate in, we should deal with andragogy and pedagogy. Pedagogy, this is how to teach a young generation. Andragogy, how to teach adults. We should teach all time adults, of course. Therefore, corrosion, it's more than a job. It is a passion. And I would like the last slide to show, to share with you what will be the shortage in the near future. Energy, no, fuel, no. Water, no. Who no? Skilled, knowledgeable specialists, corrosionists, and process safety engineers. This is exactly that I said that I trust in Rust. And we should work together, corrosionists and process safety engineers. So definitely, thank you for that closure, Alec. So I trust in Rust. <laughs> I like that one. And uh, yeah, so we need to, we need to, we've lost Lena's video, but I'm sure she's going to come up uh, so we can just 
say uh, thank you to our audience. And uh, just stay uh, connected. If you're looking for, if you're looking for ways to share knowledge, definitely that's one of the things that we have said multiple times here, right? So, how do we share knowledge? How do we? But there is also the other component: how people get access to it, and how much do you really trust the sources? And then we should seek, you know professional uh, and uh, and incredible sources rather than just um, doing something that is not really credible. So with that, I thank you very much all the people that joined us, Alec, and thank you so much. You're always supportive and you have all my gratitude for that. Lena, likewise, um, we'll mm -hmm. keep talking. Um, we had a really good reception of people that are not corrosionists wanting to know a little bit. So your challenge, Lena, is going back to the field and tell those guys that we showed in the video what corrosion really is or show them this video. And then, you know, it is just a matter of learning and then how we really can interconnect with each other. So it's not you doing your job and the other one doing their job is how do we make this as a collective better and by collective i mean everyone so thank you to all the participants uh, please let us know what do you think about uh, one of those uh, or the next webinar what would you like to see so we spoke about safety process safety and corrosion what will you be interested to see next and then that'd be a good way of you know getting you involved in what you want to learn with that thank you so much everyone lena thank you so much thank you thank you everyone yes. okay alec thank, you, thank you so much and thank then you. everyone yes. have a great day and we'll post this video later on as part of our webinars in material business and i hope that you can keep on uh you know absorbing everything that we come and show here and thank you so thank much you. bye now thanks. thanks thank you thank you